waters are fast moving. Unlike other big rallies, a bit earlier at about 7 a.m., a group from the Coast Guard. Welcome to Hashtag PH Vote 2013. Today on Rappler, Philippine police launches a manhunt for 13 others in the pork barrel scam. President Aquino says the court should consider Senator Enrile's age if he is jailed. And terrorist group ISIS says it will take the war to Jordan and Lebanon. Hello, I'm Paterno S. Makel. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. The manhunt is on for 13 co-accused of Senators Bong Revilla and Jingoy Estrada who have not surrendered to authorities. On June 20, Friday, the Antigraph Court Sandigan Bayan issued arrest warrants for Revilla and 32 others. Revilla surrendered that same day. He is now detained in a special detention cell in Camp Krame. On June 23, Monday, Estrada joined them there after the Sandigan Bayan ordered his arrest, along with 25 others. As of June 24, Tuesday, 19 of Revilla's co-accused posted bail, while 16 of Estrada's co-accused secured temporary liberty. This leaves 13 others currently at large. Some of them are charged in the plunder and graft cases of both senators. They are accused of conniving to pocket funds meant for development projects. Prosecutors on the Ombudsman want to amend information on the plunder cases of the three senators filed by Sandigan Bayan. The amendment appears to have been triggered by a point raised by Janet Napolis, which could weaken the cases against Senators Sevilla, Estrada, and Juan Ponce Enrile. Napolis is alleged to be the mastermind of the funder diversion scam. Earlier, Napolis argued she could not be charged with plunder because her actions were meant to enrich herself and not public officials. Napolis' lawyers earlier said there is no plunder if Napolis, a private individual, was the one who, quote, principally and ultimately benefited. To our mind, that is the very argument that we have been raising right from the start. That there can be the, uh, a crime of plunder if the person ultimately benefited by the production proceeds is the private individual. Ombudsman prosecutors file a manifestation before the Sandigan Bayan with a motion to admit, admit, admit amended information against Revilla and Estrada. They want to strike out a phrase that Napoles siphoned lawmakers' discretionary funds for her personal gain. President Benigno Aquino says the court should consider the age and medical condition of Senator Juan Ponce Enrile. The 90-year-old Enrile faces charges before the Antigraph Court for allegedly stealing public funds in a corruption scandal. The court has yet to issue a decision on whether there is probable cause to the charges filed against Enrile. But Aquino adds, Enrile's age should also be a factor. The president cites the Bill of Rights which prohibits inhuman or cruel punishment. Aquino says, quote, The way I read that, the senator is 90 years old. The guy is known to have a lot of ailments. It seems like some consideration must be made. Critics sit Aquino, Aquino for allowing Enrile's co-accused senators, Bong Revilla and Jingoy Estrada, to stay in special custom-built cells. In an open letter to Aquino, cultural historian John Silva compares the government's treatment of the three accused to the imprisonment of the president's father, Ninoy Aquino, during martial law. Silva tells Aquino, quote, Your dad didn't go to jail for stealing, so why the hell are you treating these senators with kid gloves? But Aquino says there's no basis for comparison. The Makati city government says it returned to the National Treasury a new pork barrel worth 54.7 million pesos or about $1.25 million. But state auditors say the city may have to return more. The December 2012 report of the Commission on Audit shows the city's unused pork barrel is at 123.51 million pesos or $2.82 million. This is more than double the amount the city returned to the national government. The report also shows Makati has a news funds from a decade ago. In November 2013, the court declared the pork barrel unconstitutional, following outrage over a massive fund diversion scandal. In compliance, local governments started returning unused discretionary funds to the national treasury. The first to return funds was the local government of Pangasinan. The Philippines hits China for publishing a new map that uses a 10-dash line to expand its claim over the South China Sea. 
The map deviates from the usual 9-dash line that Beijing previously used to claim the sea, including parts claimed by the Philippines. Philippine Foreign Affairs spokesman Charles Jose says the new map shows China's, quote, unreasonably expansive claim that is clearly contrary to international law. He adds, quote, it's, it is precisely such ambitious expansionism that is causing the tensions in the South China Sea. The Philippines filed a historic case against China before an international tribunal. The Philippines argues the nine-dash line contradicts the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. An earthquake shakes part of the Philippines Wednesday, 7.52 p.m. The Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, or FIVOX, reports the quake has a magnitude of 5.7, with an epicenter located 20 kilometers southwest of Calatagan, Batangas. The quake is tectonic in origin. No damage has been reported so far, but the VVOX report expects af aftershocks to follow. Ratings firm Nielsen says the percentage of Philippines with access to the internet nearly doubles in the last four years. In its Pinoy Netizen report, Nielsen said 52% of Filipinos have access to the internet, up from 27% in 2010. More Filipinos turn to mobile phones as desktop users decline, dropping to 35% this year, from 63% in 2012. Laptops remain the most preferred device for accessing the web, with tablets gaining ground. The International Business Times reports a video showed terrorist group Islamic State of Syria, or ISIS, promising to take the holy war to Jordan and Lebanon. Jordanian Abu Musab al-Zarqawi established al-Qaeda in Iraq, a forerunner of ISIS. ISIS fighters seized control of more than a dozen cities and towns across western and northern Iraq, along with border crossings into Syria and Jordan, in a bid to create an Islamic state stretching from Syria to Iraq. The advance of the group raises fears the conflict could spill into neighboring countries. On Wednesday, the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights says Al-Qaeda's Syrian offshoot made an oath of loyalty to ISIS at a key town on the Iraqi border. Hundreds of journalists from the BBC and other news organizations held a silent protest in London Tuesday in support of Al Jazeera reporters imprisoned in Egypt. The journalists, with black tape over their mouths, gathered outside the BBC headquarters to show support for former colleague Peter Greste, Mohamed Fadalfami, and producer Baher Mohamed. BBC News head James Harding said the verdict was unjust and the case unfounded. Investigative reporter John Sweeney said, quote, Journalism is not a crime. The protesters earlier sent a letter to Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi asking for help. But the president said Tuesday the government would not interfere. Al Jazeera's Barnaby Phil Phillips said his colleagues would keep up their pressure on the Egyptian authorities and hoped it would force them to free the journalists. The free got prison terms of between 7 and 10 years for, quote, spreading false news and aiding ousted President Mohamed Morsi supporters, the Muslim Brotherhood. Rappler issues a statement on the imprisonment of Al Jazeera journalists. Led by its veteran journalists Glenda Gloria and Jai Hofelenia, the group joins journalists around the, wor the world in denouncing the attacks on press freedom in Egypt. Journalism is not a crime. The conviction of the three the Al Jazeera journalists are unjust and detrimental to freedom of expression. We call on Egypt to free them now. Let's now look at Rappler's Rap for the Day, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number 4, former News of the World editor Andy Coulson is convicted of phone hacking in a trial that stirred controversy in Britain. His colleague, News editor Rebecca Brooks, was cleared of all charges. The jury delivered their verdicts Tuesday. The News of the World, a British tabloid, allegedly hacked the phones of Britain's royal family, politicians and celebrities. News Corp boss Rupert Murdoch shut down the Sunday tabloid in July 2011. Colson had once served as a communications director of British Prime Minister David Cameron. Following the verdict, Cameron apologized for hiring Colson. At number 5, France's top administrative court approves ending life support for a 38-year-old quadriplegic in a vegetative state despite his parents' wish to keep him alive. 
Vincent Lambert's doctors, wife and siblings support the decision. He has been a quadriplegic since a 20, 2008 car crash. Lambert's parents and two siblings oppose the decision. The European Court of Human Rights is looking into the issue. France legalized passive euthanasia in 2005. And at number 10, Queen Elizabeth visits the Game of Thrones set and met a few cast members of the hit fantasy series. On a visit to the studio of the HBO show in Northern Ireland, the Queen met British actors Lena Headey, Kit Harrington, and Macy Williams. She was reportedly impressed with the Iron Throne prop used in the television series but did not try sitting on it. Instead, the producers and actors gave her a miniature version to take home and put beside her real throne. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Rap. Every story on Rappler has a mood meter which gives you 8 emotions to choose from. Click how you feel and your vote comes down to the mood navigator in the middle of the front page which crowdsources the mood of the day. It also gives you the top 10 stories with the most clicks. Our mood navigator today looks a bit different. We still have stories that make people angry like this one. Uh, Aquino and really deserves consideration in jail. 73% angry. But uh, many other stories on our mood navigator today are color green. Uh, like this one. This story makes people happy. Philippines supports Japan's collective self-defense. 86% happy. And uh, this one, Philippine internet penetration doubles in four years, 55% happy. And the story that got the, the most number of votes on our Mood Navigator is this one, the greenest story on our Mood Navigator. It's a story about Filipino pride. Filipino engineer tops Southeast Asia in Google Code Jam, 71% inspired. All these stories contributed to the mood of the day. Today, most people are inspired. That's Rappler's newscast for today, Wednesday, June 25, 2014. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Paterno S. Machel, and as we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today.